This is Dr. Erzberger, and we're going to talk about compound interest in section 6.2 in the E chapter. We just got off a discussion of simple interest, which is where your interest rate is always charged based upon the number of years and only the principal. Well, that changes for compound for compound interest. For compound interest, what happens is an existing account balance includes both original principal and previously earned interest. So interest is charged on the account balance at periodic intervals. So for instance, if we say that the compounding period is annual, then it happens once a year. But if we say it happens monthly, then every month the balance of the account is reevaluated and interest is charged or given based upon that new balance. I think this will make good sense as we get to it and do some examples. Um, just a little terminology. When we say compounding frequency is annual, um, that happens once a year. Semi-annually, twice a year. Quarterly, four times a year. Monthly, 12 times a year. And daily, 365 times a year. Now, suppose that you, have, that you invest $10,000 at 10% annual interest. How much would you have at the end of five years if the interest was computed using simple interest and using compound interest? Well, we know how to solve this example using simple interest, but not really so much compound interest. So we examine a formula. Let uh, the following variables be associated. So T is clearly time and R is interest rate. P is principal and F is future value. The real change here is M, which is the number of times the interest is compounded annually. And if you look down at the bottom of the slide, there's a formula that is exponential in T. So what we see is that over time, um, accounts that, grow, that draw interest in a compounded fashion grow exponentially. This is the way that you want to invest your money. Now, but what we've seen though is there's actually a really nice paste function in Excel that does this for us. And in this case, it's the future value or FV function. The syntax is pretty straightforward, but I'm going to show you how to do this a lot more easily. Let's go back and let's do this example. So I'm going to copy and paste this like we've been doing. And I'm going to bring it over here to Microsoft Excel. I'm going to paste it in. All right, well, let's identify a few things. principal is a thousand dollars the rate is 10% which we write as 0.10 and the time is five years for simple interest this is pretty easy it's just equals principal times rate times time five hundred dollars each year 10% is charged 10% is one hundred dollars and that happens five years in a row, so $100 gets accrued five years in a row for $500 of interest. For compound interest, it's a little different. One thing I don't know is a compounding frequency or period. Let's just say it's yearly. So what happens, the compounding frequency is once a year. So what happens is at the end of the year, interest is charged. Well, for year two, there's a, new, there's a new interest that's computed based upon the principal that exists in the account. But in year two, the uh, interest that the principal that exists include interest from year one. Very interesting idea. So let's go about doing this. Now, if I want to go through and compute this, what I think you should notice is that follow my pointer, there's this little F sub X box. Click on it. I'm just going to type future value and go. Well, the FV function shows up. We hit OK. We select it. We've got this nice, nice window. Now, the interest rate is not just 10%. Look at what it says down here. It says rate is the interest rate per period. For example, we use 6% for four divided by four for quarterly payments at 6% APR. We're saying it's happening annually, so we have. 10% divided by the compounding frequency, which is 1 in this case. The number of periods is the total number of periods in the investment. 
Well, for us, that is the compounding frequency, or m, times the length of time. So for us, notice it says it's 5. Well, it happens once a year for 5 years. There are 5 compounding frequencies. And the present value in this case is $1,000. Now, notice the number shows up negative. So we adjust that, just put it by putting a negative in front of that. At the end of five years, you are at a future value of $1,610. Well, the future value for the simple interest is the principal plus the interest to $1,500. I think it's really clear which one we want to use because remember what happened is at the end of year one, 10% was charged. It's now $1,100. The end of year two, interest is charged on $1,100, so on and so forth. Pretty neat. We win there, pretty quick. Well, so let's rename that one, example one. I believe that's example one. Let's call it example zero. Now let's do some example one. $1,000 is deposited in an account where it's earned 8% interest compounded quarterly. Find the account balance after 6 months. Find the interest earned. Well, the four things that we need to identify whenever we're doing this are principal, rate, time, and compounding frequency. Those are things you must recognize. Well, the principal is how much? That's right, $1,000. The rate is at what? 8%, so we write it as 0 0.08. The time, we'll come back to that in a little bit. But the uh, compounding frequency is quarterly, which means it happens four times a year. And for this problem, we're going to say the account balance after six months. So in terms of a year, that is six months divided by 12 months. It converts it to a year. We have a half a year. Part A, let's find the future value of the account. We come up here, click our little FX, and we do the future value function. Rate is, again, the interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods per year. The number of periods is the number of periods per year times the number of years. So in our case it's two because it happens quarterly. There are two quarters and half of a year. And the payment is the negative or the payment rather. The present value is the negative principal. So at the end of six months he earns a thousand and forty dollars and forty cents. Part B the question asks, what's the interest? Remember the interest the future value is always the principal plus any interest earned. So for us, this is really just going to look like the future value minus the principal, and that'll let us know what the interest is. Well, it's forty dollars and forty cents. Take some time and pause if you didn't understand it. Remember that you can feel free to contact at jernsberger at lagrange.edu. A great example. In 1777, Jacob de Haven, a wealthy Pennsylvania merchant, responded to a desperate plea from George Washington when it looked as if the Revolutionary War was about to be lost. He loaned the Continental Congress $450,000 to rescue Washington's troops at Valley Forge. When the war was over, Mr. de Haven unsuccessfully tried to collect what was owed him. He died penniless in 1812. In 1990, his descendants sued the U.S. government for repayment of the original amount, plus interest, at the then prevailing rate of 6%. How much did the government own? Oh, his descendants. On the 1990 anniversary of the loan, if the interest was A, simple interest, and B, compounded monthly.
All right, well, let's think about this. He learns a couple things. Well, what do we need to know? We always need to know the principle, the rate, and the time. The compounding frequency is only necessary for compound interest. Well, the principle is $450,000. Okay. Interest rate is 6%, so we write that as 0 0.06. And on the 1990 anniversary of the loan, Well, this just looks like 1990 minus 18 minus whatever he loaned it, which is 1777, which is 213 years. That's a long time. All right, well, let's do some simple interest. So we want to find the future value on the loan. Okay. Remember, we've got the present value plus the interest. The interest is just principal times rate times time. The future value, we add the interest plus the principal. And that's where we're at. Now let's format this so it actually looks like money for a second. Um, that's $6.2 million. Not bad. Now, Part B asks the question, what if it's compounded monthly? So the compounding frequency is 12. All right, well, let's talk, compute the future value. We're going to do our paste function bit. Over up here, we do function value. Future value, so the rate is 0 0.06 divided by the compounding frequency. The number of periods is the number of times per year times 213 years. So think about it, that's, 200, that's 2,556 compounding periods, that's a lot. The payments are, are non-negotiable, but the present value is 450,000. Remember, we have to put that negative in there in order to make the number come out positively. The future value is this ginormous number. So this is hundreds, thousands, millions, billions. The future value for part B is $154.7 billion. Now, I don't know about the Haven descendants, but I think I would settle for, let's say, $10 billion from the U.S. government. I think that's a pretty good deal, don't you? Let's do another example. We're going to rename this for example 3. And blow it up a little bit. You own a small gym and have inherited some equipment from a bigger gym in town. You figure that in about three years, the equipment will need to be replaced and it will cost about $120,000. You have $100,000 to invest now and would like to invest it to receive the needed money three years from now. If you can invest the money at 6% semi-annually, do you have enough to invest in order to receive the needed amount in time? So you're going to replace, so you know it's going to be future value, you've got the present value, and you're asking a question, with $100,000, can I get to 120 with the rate I can get? So let's figure it out. The principal is $100,000. The rate is 0.06. The time is 3, and the compounding frequency is 6% semi-annually. Now let's go back to our slideshow. To be 6% semi-annually, that means it happens twice a year. Okay. So let's compute the future value of this. So the rate, let's hit the rate. Excuse me, divided by the compounding frequency. The number of periods is the compounding frequency times the time. Because that gives us how many compounding pe frequent, uh, periods total happen. We don't have a payment, but we do have a negative value of a principal, which is for us $100,000.
I'm not really sure what just happened there. Oh, I do know what happened. Let's do that formula again. I know exactly what happened. I put money in here in the, in the type. Let's do it again. Rate divided by compounding frequency. The number of periods times the time. There's no payment, but there is a present value of the $100,000. It's all said and done. You've got 119,405.23. Well, that's clearly not $120,000. So the question is, how much would I have needed to invest to do that? So let's do the same problem all over again. 100,000. So we're going to tinker. And this is the future value. Of the rate divided by the compound frequency. Excuse me. And the negative principal. Right, well, what if I'd had $101,000? That gets me there. Okay, not bad. What if I have $100,000 with 500 extra? That more than beats it. If I have 100250 not enough. So let's try 100,375. Still not enough. So I'm somewhere between 100,500 and 100,375. So let's try 100,450. Not enough. 100,475. 100,490. Still not enough. 100,495. 100,499. We're there. 100,480, not enough. 100,490, not enough. 100,495, not enough. 100,498, not quite. 100, and that breaks it over. It's 100,499. We could get the dollars and cents, but that seems like an awful lot of work. So David Murtha wants to have an IRA that will be worth $150,000 when he retires at age 65. How much must he deposit at age 26 at 6 and 1 8 percent compounded daily? If at age 65 David, David arranges for the monthly interest to be sent to him, how much will he receive each 30 day month? Alright, so let's do example 4. Add another slide. I love Microsoft. There we go. So what do we know? We know what he wants the future value to be. So he's starting at age 26 according to that and he's going to retire at age 65. So time looks like 65 minus 26. The rate is 6 and 1 eighth. That's 6.125%, which is 0 0.06125. And the compounding frequency is daily, which means it happens 365 times a year. Okay. So how much must you deposit? Well, that's a future value. Uh, that's a present value. So let's figure this one out. I bet if there's a future value, there's a present value. And lo and behold, there is. We do the same thing, the rate divided by the compounding frequency. The number of periods, 365 times the number of days. All right, there's no payment, but there is a future value. So let's just click on this and see if the numbers come up positive. No, they don't. So let's do negative to make everything work out nicely. 
So if he puts thirteen thousand dollars at the bank at twenty six, he'll have one hundred fifty grand when he retires. Not bad. How do I do part B? The monthly interest. What I do is I say the time block is one month and subtract off um, and subtract off the uh, the principal each time. What we're going to say is it's 12 times a year. So, how much will we receive? This can be the future value. The rate is still that divided by the compounding frequency. The number of periods is still time times the compounding frequency. There's no payment, but there is a negative um, present value, which is um, that much. You can always come back up here and click on this and it tells you the wizard. So negative B17. Okay, so this is the future value. Alright, good job, us. Except I missed something. The time is not the number of periods. He wants it to happen in 30 day months. He wants it to happen in B13, which is 39 times a year. 39 times. He, the compounding frequency is the amount of a year. So I've got one month. And it happens. The compounding frequency times that. So I've got 365 times 1 month divided by 12. When it's all said and done, I've got 13, 8, 30, 43. So the interest on this looks like 13, 8, 34, 33, minus 13, 7, 64, 40. Not really enough for this guy to live on. APY is that the APY is absolutely useful. What it does, if, if you're paying attention, this looks like the future value computation with T is one. Okay, so if T is one, what you see is a straightaway growth. Well, you're also saying that your principal, which would be right here for future value, is also one dollar. So how much did one dollar grow in that one year window of time? Well, the way you find out is subtracting one back off. That's the APY, the annual percentage yield. And there's an Excel way to do this, but it's much harder than just typing the formula. But here's what happens, is you get to compare two different types of payments or interest plans um, and make the apples to apples discussions. Otherwise, you're comparing two different interest rates on two different loans or two different investments, um, and it's just too much to keep up with. So let's figure this one out. Example five. Find the, eight, the annual yield corresponding to a nominal rate, nominal rate of 8.4% compounded monthly. Okay, so rate is 0 0.084. You don't have to do anything crazy. The compounding frequency, I think it's where you can see it. Is monthly, so that's 12. That's all we need for the APY. We need 1 plus R divided by M to the M and then minus 1. So watch what I do. I do equals 1 plus rate divided by compounding frequency. There's that. This looks like the thing above it. Raised to the same compounding frequency. And this is this value less 1. So it looks like it looks like a pure rate of growth, an absolute growth, if you will. Okay, pretty neat. 
National Trust Savings offer five-year CDs. Let's look at this one. Okay. National Trust Savings and Bank of the Future both offer five-year CDs, different interest rates, with um, different compounding frequencies. Which is the more advantageous for the consumer? Now, this is where I'm going to say, let's set them up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do R M R divided by M one plus R divided by M one plus R divided by M to the M and then minus one. Okay, so the National Trust Savings and the Bank of the Future make a nice little table here. Their rates are pretty easy, 0.0825 and 0.0828. Their compounding frequencies are daily and annually. Okay, So let's do R divided by M for both. So this looks like rate divided by compounding frequency. For 1 plus R to the, one plus R to the M, this is equals 1 plus rate divided by the compounding frequency. Again, I get to take this value and raise it to the nth. Let's format it so it's certainly a number. And this looks like whatever this value is minus y. There's clearly an error. What did I do that was wrong? to the M. I need to actually reference the value. Alright, let's subtract off one. I see about an 8.59 or 8.60 percent growth. Well, the really cool thing about all this is I can highlight and select this and do this for both columns. Well, which one is more advantageous? Well, it's clearly the National Trust Savings. Now, what I recommend is if you've got the e-chapter, is to go through and work these exercises. These exercises are really beneficial, extremely useful, and I hope that you're putting some time into them. Thanks. Thanks for listening.